Hi, I'm Jason Lance, co-founder and CEO of MuseLab, and I'm incredibly excited to introduce to you today one of our latest innovations, D2X, a new open source Salesforce DevOps project designed to make it easier for anyone in the Salesforce ecosystem to adopt the Salesforce well-architected principles of adaptable, resilient, and composable. Along with D2X, MuseLab is also launching D2X Launchpad, a new web application that makes it easy to, to start new GitHub repositories pre-configured for, for use with D2X. Simply log in with your GitHub account, granting basic information and access to your profile. And then from there, you'll fill out some basic information about your project. D2X needs to know where you want your repository created, what you want to call it, what kind of package you want to be creating, whether it's you just want to do unmanaged metadata or 1GP or 2GP packaging, the namespace, and finally, let's use D2X's composability features to build an extension package on top of salesforce.org's outbound funds module by selecting it. Now, let's go ahead and confirm and list our project in D2X Launchpad. And when we click Create Repository, we're going to be asked for elevated GitHub permissions. D2X needs this in order to be able to go and create your repository, but it only uses these permissions temporarily and deletes and revokes the grant as soon as the project is created. You can see a link here to go verify that the grant was, was revoked. Now click on the, the repository link to go view the project repository. Now I want to show you really quickly, I've set up in my GitHub organization, I've already in advance of this video set up DevHub auth URL and a GitHub email. The D2X documentation tells you about how to set these up, but I've already done that, which means that my new repository inherits all, everything it needs to run builds. So. Let's make some changes. We want to go ahead and create a GitHub code space, a through the web development environment. Now, when you're creating it, make sure and use this new with options. This is important because it gives you this form here that allows you to easily assign uh, personal GitHub uh, secrets that you have set up for code spaces and assign them to this repository. Again, there's links to the documentation for how to go set that up. Now, GitHub is going to go off and build our Code, our, our code space, which is a VS Code instance that's running in our browser. I haven't installed anything on my computer at this point. Now my code space is open, and you can see the new project repositories files are over on the left. And let's go ahead and take a look at the cumulusci.yaml file and see that dependency configured. And you'll notice that the startup scripts in the code space have are already authenticating us to the dev hub using that dev hub auth URL secret. Now that I've been authenticated, I can go ahead and kick off CCI flow run dev org in order to go run and build out my first dev org. There's nothing magic about Cumulus CI. It's just uh, sitting on top of SFDX and creating scratch orgs. It's doing metadata deployments. One of the magic bits that it does have is, the, is its dependency management, where you can point it at another repository like Outbound Funds, and it will go find the latest release, build out an org. So now we've got an org with Outbound Funds, and we want to open it in the browser so that we can go add a field to one of the outbound funds objects. Run the CCI org browser command. It pops open the org in the browser. And I can go into the object manager and check and make sure that the funding program object from the outbound funds module, again, a managed package that we've installed that we're looking to extend uh, and build on top of. Let me find the funding program object. And for our demo use case, we're going to add an is test checkbox field to this not very exciting, but we want to be able to flag certain funding programs so we can exclude them from reports. All right, so I've made that change in my org, and now I'm going to use Cumulus CI's list changes uh, task in order to interact with the source tracking and see all the changes that I made in my metadata. And in this case, I want to go ahead and filter down and only include the custom field using Cumulus CI's minus minus include option. Now let's go ahead and edit that command and change it from list changes to retrieve changes to go fetch the changes from the scratch org. And here in a second, we'll notice the, the changes have been retrieved into our repository and a new change shows up under the force app directory. Let's take a look at that file. You can see the field definition here. Now let's go ahead and commit. We stage the file and then we add a commit message, um, click the commit button, and then uh, synchronize that new commit with the upstream repository. So this pushes the change from our code space up into GitHub. That is now going to kick off our GitHub Actions builds, 
But before we exit our code space, let's be good and clean up our scratch org. Even as the creator of Cumulus CI, I sometimes forget the commands. <laughs> now let's go ahead and stop our code space by clicking down at the bottom left and clicking stop code space. And now let's go check out our actions builds. We've got two builds that have kicked off, a feature build and beta build. Let's check out the feature build and see what it's doing. It's initializing a Docker container that has all of the tooling pre-installed for us. Uh, it's connecting to our dev hub, it's setting a default org, and then it's gonna run this Cumulus CI flow called build feature test package, which is gonna build a 2GP managed package version of the package that we're building, but in a separate package so that we can keep it separate from our main release line. This is all baked into the D2X process flow, nothing you have to worry about. You'll see that it's installing the uh, dependencies just like it did in our code space environment. And we've now got a package that installs and tests. So let's check in on our beta build. And you can see our beta build is still actually building the package version. Um, this build is gonna take a little bit longer because the feature test build is building an unverified package version. So we get a package version really quick for testing. For the beta package, this is building a real beta package that's releasable. We'll actually release it here in just a minute. So it's gotta actually build a build scratch org behind the scenes, install the outbound funds project, all of that sort of stuff. Now notice all that we did in this entire project to configure dependencies would just point at the outbound funds GitHub repository. My 2GP package is built successfully as an extension package. It's now created the beta version and is now testing and uh, creating a scratch org to install the beta version and run all the tests against it. Now, if you've worked with managed packages before, you've probably seen this challenge that it's working through right now. When you upload a beta version, it's not immediately available in other pods. So Cumulus CI pauses, waits, retries up to 20 times with a longer variable time in between, just to make sure that this beta build gets through and gets to green. Now we've got a green build for beta and everything looks good on a readme page with a build badge. Now the last step, let's create a production release. Go to the production release workflow, click to run the workflow. This is a manually triggered workflow. So the idea is your release manager would come in and click this button to run. Notice there's nothing technical that you have to really know. You just have to be able to go click it, point and click in a web interface to kick off a build. That build's gonna kick off. It's gonna pull down the D2X Docker image. It's going to create or promote the latest beta version, create records in our GitHub repository for a Git tag and a Git release, and then install and test that package in a new uh, uh, scratch org. And a few minutes later, we have a fully passing build. The build also created a GitHub release and a Git tag pointing at the code that went into the version. And on the release, you can find the install URL for the package. We wanna hear from you. What will you develop, build, test, demo, share, or deliver with the capabilities of D2X? Get started today at launchpad.muselab.com and d2x.readthedocs.io.